As always, it is an exciting time for Blender users these days, thanks to all the impressive add-ons and tools that are getting released on a regular basis. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at some of the newly released add-ons and updates that can take your 3D workflow to the next level, like when creating terrains, hard surface modeling, effects, and much more. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First we have True Terrain 5, the fifth installment of what is considered to be a highly successful add-on. This time around, it made a powerful return after they rebuilt it from scratch around a new system. I'm talking about, of course, about the geometry nodes of Blender, but does it live up to the hype? Personally, I would say yes, and there are tons of reasons to back that claim. In fact, there are way too many, to the point where we can't cover all of them in this video. So to give you a brief overview with this version, the add-on got a serious makeover of the menus which made them much more organized and easier to navigate. As we can see, it is split into three main sections. Up top, we can have the grid settings, where we can tweak the general features of the terrain, like the size and how dense it is. Below that, we have the meat of the add-on, a layer-based system which was built around the power of geometry nodes as we sat. What this allows us to do is to put the different details of the terrain onto different layers, which gives us more control and the ability to adjust or change any specific parts whenever we want. Now, what can we add to these layers? To be completely upfront, we've got a whole world of choices in the third section of the site panel. There we can load the layers with realistic details, thanks to features like noise, light maps, or erosion. And the best part is that they are fully customizable since they were built around geometry nodes. But if that's not enough, then you can even load your own maps too. These details can also be placed anywhere in the terrain by using a red rectangle as a guide on the surface. We can also mix layers with the help of things like height masks. Speaking of masks, it also features a range of masks like attribute, distance, and height to create all sorts of textures that respond to environment elements. On top of that, there is also a whole modifier section that we can use to add different effects such as blur, deflate, inflate, flatten, and many other amazing modifiers that can make things easier and can help you get great results. Speaking of achieving great results, KitOps Pro was also updated recently, and this time we were introduced to a very simple change in the tool, but one that is considered a game changer and a time saver. Let me elaborate. For those that never heard of it before, KitOps Pro is an add-on that is a must-have for any hard surface modeler in Blender, and it basically uses inserts, which can be placed anywhere you want in the 3D model by dragging them around to cut or add details to existing objects, or maybe to texture them, or anything else in between. These inserts come in the form of KitOps K-Packs, but the issue I have always found with these is how hard it is sometimes to find the one I'm looking for among many K-Packs collections. And that's exactly what this version addresses, because they have finally added a new feature that allows us to search through the entire collections of KitOps K-Packs and inserts, even if they are not currently loaded. And then, we can just drop them into the scene and start using them right away. Still with the topic of modeling, we have Flowify for Blender, a new add-on that just came out that is based on the Flowify SketchUp plugin with the same name and one that emerges as a solution to an issue that I personally have always struggled with, as many people did. And maybe you did too. So what is that? Basically, this add-on will help you bend an object around another 3D model that you select, and it will be bent as accurately as it can be, without having to do tedious manual tweaking. But hold on, since it is not magic, there are a few things to be aware of in order for it to work correctly. First of all, the mesh you want to bend needs to have some topology and enough edges and faces that would help it bend, which is a given. Then we have also to use a plane or what we call a source grid, and this is used as a reference to tell the add-on the area where we want the object to be bent. 
There are a few other technical aspects to be aware of, but that's the general idea behind it. And if you set up that right, then it should work with no issues. Now we're gonna talk about the hand-drawn line generator. And well, I think the idea is really simple with this one. All you need to do is click the generation button and after the completion of the rendering process, hand-drawn lines will be displayed on your model. These lines can also be edited and further adjusted and we can manually mark the positions where we want the lines to be generated by selecting the edges we want them to be in. We can also adjust their size and colors as well as separate the 3D model and the lines into separate layers when we render. Now, how can it be used? I think this can be particularly powerful if you want to generate a black and white manga effect. But we can also get creative with it and do pretty much anything we want by mixing them with other stylized techniques. Talking about updates, we have an update for the add-on called Sketch and Carve, which made a big comeback with a brand new version. This add-on is a way to transform modeling, animation, and simulation into an experience that resembles to the join, making it both a paradise for both 2D artists who want to transition into 3D and a time-saving tool for seasoned 3D artists by simplifying the process. I mean, you could never go wrong with that, right? In terms of the update, the add-on received some brand new tools that tackle different tasks, such as a spinning tool and a scattering tool which we can use to draw an area to scatter objects, and a new inset tool that works similarly by drawing. All of these also come with a menu that we can use to adjust different aspects of them. And for those who never heard of it before, let's discover now some of the other features that make it look like a 2D tool. As a way to illustrate this, let's take a closer look at the modeling section, where we can find, for example, tools to draw or cut through the objects which work exactly like 2D join. By that I mean you simply select the pen tool and then, well, you just draw. And similar to software like Photoshop, we can even choose the stroke type, but for 3D. Besides, we also have access to a collection of tools that works around that system, such as the ability to draw on top of any surface, a slice and simulate features, or even a smooth tool to make our objects round without having to deal with any of the technical aspects of subdivision modeling. Now moving on, if you want some productivity in your workflow, we have a newly released add-on called M-Panel Subtabs. I think we can all agree that the true potential of Blender can only be achieved with the help of some add-ons. But if you are anything like me, you probably use a lot of them, and you are probably annoyed because the side panel is crowded. And this is what this add-on is all about. Mpanel Subtabs is a tool that introduces the concept of subtabs. But you might be thinking, what's the deal with these anyway? The Subtabs panel, also called the Title panel, just like the name suggests, is a tool to regroup the add-ons into subtabs. Think of it as folders. We can put, for example, rig-related tabs into their own category and modeling ones into modeling tabs, and the list goes on. What's important to note is that we can decide the maximum number of tabs in each row. Each row will be showing in the subtabs panels. And we can also decide if the category settings would be applied from the startup, or only when the user decides to. So, as you can see, as its core, the add-on doesn't look much compared to the others on this list. But it fixes the fundamental issue of Blender and it organizes the user interface, which makes working with the software way easier. So guys, if you are interested in one of these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.